I'm going to try and take you through how to build a stack data structure. Uh, so the general idea with a stack is that it's a LIFO structure, which is a last in first out structure, which then means that the best analogy that I can really think of is pancakes in that if you're cooking pancakes, you cook one and then you put it on the plate and then you take the next one, you cook that and you put it on the plate. And so you take, you have on the plate pancake one, followed by pancake two, and then pancake three, and so on and so on. And so if you wanted to take a pancake off the plate, you would then have to take the top one off, and then the next. So the last one in is the first one out. All right, so that's not particularly good in the case of pancakes, because the bottom one will be the coldest, but it comes up as being quite useful in terms of computers. Um, the main example that I can think of is... Uh, function calls. So what, the function that you call inside of a main in your C programs uh, has a memory address. And the way that the computer knows where to return to when it's finished with a function is that it has a stack, right? So if in the main you call function one, which then calls function two, which then calls function three. Function three knows to return to function two, to return to function one, to, to return to the main. And Generally, that is useful in that, in that situation, and um, it stacks actually come up in a couple of different places, but generally the idea today is to just take you through how to build one in C. Uh, and you might have to build one in C because you are dealing with an embedded system. It might be because you have particular needs that general, um, I don't know, standard implementations in C++ don't uh, afford you the understanding that you need, or maybe you're just trying to understand what exactly they mean. And um, it is kind of fun to implement it yourself and see uh, all the little nitty gritty bits. So I have here um, a template uh, ready to go, which you can download on the GitHub in the uh, video description. Uh, I have here a few things. So let's just go through the header file. The defines are just like a stack size. So I have a very small stack just so that we can see all the output with all the debug statements and um, see what's going on. Uh, and then I've defined true and false so that we can meet the C90 standard. Uh, just because I don't have bulls in the C90 standard. So that means that uh, we can't just use true and false. We have to actually define them. Um, we then have the uh, stack structure itself. So inside of that, let's just go through these. The, the attribute top is actually uh, an indicator of the index, which indicates the top of the structure. So it is where in the buffer, so the buffer you see here is an array. It's top is what index uh, is currently the top of the buffer. So it's, it, that, the top is where you would put stuff. Uh, next, we have the number of elements, which you use to just simply check uh, how much is uh, within the buffer itself. And the buffer is just the storage area. So the stack is essentially just a scaffolding that we have that goes over the top of the buffer and controls how it is accessed. Um, now the function prototypes. So there's a few little doc strings here but nothing major. Uh, the stack init is essentially just to take in some stack structure and initialize all these variables. Okay. Stack pop, so I don't know if you're familiar with the term pop and push. To pop something out of a, a data structure is to take it out uh, and to push it is to put it in. Uh, that's uh, fairly standard, but um, can easily throw you off. Okay, so, and then at the bottom we have a uh, stack print function, which is just for debugging, um, which is controlled and wrapped and already written here, but it essentially just has a, if the if your hashtag define debug is, is defined, then it will print stuff, but otherwise it won't. So if I comment this out, it won't print anything. And then they're littered throughout the test cases. So the test cases is probably the next place, best place to go. Um, so I'll close the header file and we'll increase the size of um, the terminal here. Okay, so here we have uh, the, the initialization of the variables. We just have some stack called s and then we have a 32-bit int x, okay? And you'll notice that I'm also using the standard ints from um, the standard int library. Uh, okay, so the test cases themselves. Um, I've got an initialization and then I have this little loop here. So I'm going to try to keep pushing to the stack until it tells me that it can't take any more. So it's kind of a true false. So like I'll, I'll try to push and it will return true if it worked and false if it doesn't. Um, and then uh, I'll print f like pushed, pushed blah to the stack and that'll be x. And then I'll print out all the variables in the stack, all its attributes, and then I'll increment x. And then I'll keep doing it until the stack fills up. Now remember our stack size was defined as four. So it'll only fill up to four and then it will return false is the intended outcome. Then we have stack pop. 
um, Stackpot will then take everything out. And as it's taking it out, it will store it in X. So X will just become a dummy variable at that point and um, it will print out all the contents of x. Sorry. So if we're starting at zero here and incrementing it will be up to four, we should expect that it, the numbers that go in are gonna be zero, one, two, and three. And then what should pop out is three, two, one, zero. So that's the end goal, right? That, that it, things come out in the opposite order that they went in. So let's just initialize the stack. So passing in a pointer, so arrow notation, top should be equal to zero. And then here we want to just say the number of elements. Well, we've got an empty stack. It's going to be, oh, if I can type, it'll be zero. The buffer itself doesn't really need any initialization um, because it's actually controlled how we access everything. So even if there are garbage values in there, it won't matter. Okay, so the first thing to check for inside of the stack pop is that if you're trying to take something out of the stack, which is what pop is about, and there's nothing in there, um, then we want to return false. So the number of elements is equal to zero, then obviously you can't do that. Return false. Okay. After that, if there is something in there, what we want to do is we want to get the buffer and inside of the buffer, we want, we want to use the top index and we want to, well, we want to set that equal to where the address that we've given here. So this, uh, these variables in here, this is the actual stack itself, but this is where we want to store the value we're given. So storage is just an address to chuck the value into for um, whoever called it. So we'll just say at the value storage, let's set that equal to top. Then what you want to do is you want to say top minus minus, and then we want to say number of elements, uh, sorry, minus minus as well. And then if that all worked, then return true. Okay. Um, oh, that's actually got to be caps because it's a define that I defined with caps. Okay. Return true. All right. Um, so that'll pop it out. Fantastic. And then now stack push, last one. Um, if the number of elements is equal to, to well, when will push fail? That's the real question. Like, when do you want to return false? And that is if you're trying to push something in and it's actually full already. So uh, if the number of elements is equal to the stack size itself, then we want to return false. Okay. Other than that, if, uh, if we're all right to charge on ahead, then what we'll do is we'll say, um, top plus plus uh, so move the, the buffer up um, and then we'll go um, take the buffer oh sorry that's, well, buffer like that and um, take the index top and set that equal to the value we've been given uh, and then we also want to increment the number of elements because we've just added one to our stack and then we also want to return true okay and here we have it so we've pushed zero to the stack the top index is one um, oh sorry by the way i just have a little script bound to a uh, vim key binding um, that just this in here just compiles and then runs it if it's, there's no errors um, and this is this all here is just the output from our main it's from our test cases up here. All this, right? So, um, push zero to the stack, top index is one, number of elements is one, push one to the stack, uh, top index is two, number of elements is two, that makes sense. Um, but remember that if you have an array of n elements, the max index is n minus one, right? Um, uh, so, if we have an array of four elements, like in our stack, the max index that we should really have is three. So at this point, we got we after we pushed three to the stack, which is the fourth value, we then um, have top index at four. But luckily, because we have the check cases of, you know, if the number of elements is equal to the stack size, return false, we actually don't push anything more. And what would happen if we tried to use uh, index four in our buffer is we might be accessing memory that's not allocated to us, which then might cause a segmentation fault, which is not what you want. Um, 
All right, and then number of elements. So it, it, here we go. We, we pushed zero, one, two. So we pushed zero, then we pushed one, then we pushed two, then we pushed three, and then what popped out? Three, two, one, zero. All right. So the stack works. The code uh, for this will be in the video description. You can. Uh, have a look at that if you didn't particularly understand points, um, but you should try to use the template and fill it out yourself and see if you can get it working. Um, okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And other than that, I'll see you next time.